How hard did you throw before driveline? 84. Top it. And what have you topped now? This summer, 96. 97 is the number for the summer. What's up guys, welcome back to another video. We got our second vlog in the Road to 97 miles per hour series. Feeling really good and excited to bring you guys along for today's video. We'll be over at driveline again. I'll be taking you guys through a recovery day plus an upper body workout. First, we got some pretty cool, exciting news. So since the past video, I did a motion capture at driveline, pretty much where you get all the data of your mechanics and actually really deep dive into it. And previously my all time high, I think was like 93.3. You're like wearing boxers and you're all marked up. So haven't had my highest velo in there. So we decided, Dean and I, that we we're gonna throw a mocap just to see where we're at so we can have a starting line pretty much. So I threw the mocap and I ended up hitting 94, 95.3. So almost a two mile an hour uh, PR in the mocap lab, which was super exciting. And I guess the coolest part was it wasn't necessarily even the plan to PR or to throw this hard this early, but pretty much the mechanical work that we were doing just translated really well to the mocap and higher effort. So we will drop it back down. I will go back to just bullpens during the week. The actual mocap info, I'll actually deep dive into that probably in the next vlog. So you guys can kind of see more of the mechanical analysis and stuff like that. But it's very exciting. And obviously 95.3 is pretty close to 97, but I still don't see myself hitting 97 for a little while. We gotta go back to work, really work on the mechanics, really work on some movement stuff, but it was very exciting. So 95 is obviously good and shows that this is really healing up well. Scar is pretty minimal. That is about it. I will now take you guys over to driveline, get a light throwing day in, show you guys what a recovery day looks like, as well as a pitcher's upper body lift. So cheers to you guys. All right, we're back at driveline now. So today we've got a recovery throwing day, which will consist of mainly just bar rotations and then pivot picks. Uh, that's about all I do throwing wise on a recovery day. And then we'll get into an upper body workout. So last video showed some of the lower body lifts. Today we're gonna show some of the upper body lifts uh, complete with like bench throws and a lot of accessory stuff. A few other guys in the gym. I don't think anyone has anything exciting today, but we'll walk around. This is going on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> uh, Ryan's one of the other guys we're throwing with. Uh, what do you have today? Just recovery? Yeah. Just recovery today. How hard did you throw before driveline? 84. Top it. And what have you topped now? This summer, 96. 97 is the number for the summer. No roof on my top and my babe see through. Hating on the pen, don't stop. They ain't gonna feed you. I've been all on my grind, so why I need you? Baby girl, love my bob and I like me too. No roof on my top and my babe see through. Ain't on the pin, don't stop, they ain't gon' feed you. I've been all on my grind, so why I need you? Big flex, my swole up, double cup and I'm pulled up. Hating like hold up, what's the problem? I'm pulled up. Big flex, my swole up, hard body, they fold up. Shorty say I done glowed up, double text on my phone. Warm up usually takes about 15 and 30 minutes, depending on how much I need. From there, go into bands. A little more movement stuff and then barbell rotations. Pivot picks, which Ryan's doing right now. The pivot picks with the bar rotation have really helped me to kind of figure out movement instead of everything just rotating at once, really rotating properly up the chain. And actually feeling it with the bar and then feeling it with the throw has been helpful. Recovery day and recovery tips are make sure your recovery day is actually a recovery day. So the volume of throws, the intensity needs to be actually monitored. Otherwise you never recover and you can never actually have that better day. So treat your recovery days as important as your high effort days, even though maybe it's not as much fun, because that's what kind of allows you to actually feel good enough to improve, so. No roof on my top and my babe see through. Hating on the pin, don't stop, it ain't gonna feed you. I've been all on my grind, so why I need you? Baby girl love my bob and I like me too. No roof on my top and my babe see through. Hating on the pin, don't stop, it ain't gonna feed you. All right, we've got an upper body lift. Um, usually after throwing, I'll eat. Perfect protein bar, they're the best. That needs to be a sponsorship on the channel. And then 
I have a Mott's fruit snack. You try to eat a little bit between throwing and lifting. That way I can get through the lift, feel pretty good. And then I'll go back and eat a real lunch. We'll take you guys through, talk through what an upper body day looks like. And it started with some bench press throws. And I'll also show you guys some of the accessory work that I do to help scap, lat, shoulder, all that stuff. So we'll get going. All right, so this is the bench throw setup. So to my knowledge, nobody else has ever built one of these besides Dean. So we put it on blocks, put two plates under it so that we're closer to it so we can add a little bit of depth. So we'll do a warm up set. Oh, uh, yep, yep, yep. First amount of weight, we just got tens. We only got bumpers, so we got big plates. There's no graceful way to get under here. Yep, yep. So pitchers, I know old school thought is that bench press is bad for pitchers. Completely disagree with that. I think bench press can be a great lift. And this is obviously an advanced or just different version of it, different stimulus. Um, if you don't have one of these, which nobody else does, to my knowledge, definitely recommend uh, bench pressing. If you can do dumbbells, that's fine too. Completely just avoiding upper body is not an option. We got another set of tens. Right now my bench press is pretty weak. I stopped bench pressing during my rehab and then I stopped throwing hard. So don't recommend it. Oh. Oh. Three. Set one, we got 25 on each side. I don't know how much the actual carousels is. And we got three sets of five. I'm gonna throw some of these in, just like this one. Oh, it feels good on my shoulders. Kind of get the back a little more active. Uh, second set, after bench press, we have rows. So we've done dumbbell rows before, um, but we only have up to 100s in the gym. Those are light. So for he we want to do heavy rows, and we also want to not just be like isolated arm movement. We want the rotation and rotating through. When you throw, it's all a rotation, so heavy pulls through. So instead of doing dumbbells today, we're actually gonna use the cable pull. We're going to a split stance, and so letting it take me a little bit, and then yanking, like pulling back, trying to get it to be a total body movement. And then we'll also do some foam roll, um, kind of like rolls up the wall. Ooh. Trying to let the shoulders and the scaps work. <sighs> All right, 140. Yeah. <sighs> All right, so after we got heavy rows with some scap work, the next step we're gonna do is mainly grip work. Uh, big for pitchers and pretty commonly not used. So if you're a pitcher, I'm assuming you're not doing a ton of grip work which if you think about what you actually do for, you want to do as a career, probably should do some grip work. So uh, we use chalk and then have like clamps and pretty much just work on finger strength and just get them used to strain so that when you're throwing, that's not like the max strain for your arm and your hand. <sighs> All right, so that was about it for today's upper body and recovery day. I'll finish up with some core, move around a little bit, roll out again and that is it for the day. So again, keys for recovery days are making sure it's actually a recovery day so that you can throw harder on the days you need to. If you don't recover well, you're not gonna be able to throw harder. Uh, pitchers, especially younger guys, don't be afraid to try to be stronger upper body wise. I know a lot of the times you preach that you throw with your legs. It's not true, you throw with your arms and legs. So being strong across the board is always going to be beneficial for you. Weak things break. That's about it for today's video. I appreciate you guys for watching and thank you very much.